ChatGPT just released ChatGPT 5.2, which brings us three brand new models, and this might be the biggest upgrade that ChatGPT has gotten in a very long time. On top of that, they released a bunch of brand new settings that you need to make sure that you're turning on, and some new features that I think that you're gonna love. And by the end of this video, you're gonna know exactly how to use these three models, and you're gonna know about all those new settings and those new features, so you could start to use them today to supercharge ChatGPT. Okay, so now that ChatGPT 5.2 is out, it's incredibly easy to use. You're literally just going to come over over to ChatGPT, you're gonna come up here to the left-hand side and you are gonna see that there are now three new models. If we click on Instant, this brings up ChatGPT 5.2 Instant. In just a second, I'm gonna walk you through what each of these models is good for and when you should actually be using them. But if you come over here to Pro, this will bring up ChatGPT 5.2 Pro and we could see that there is Standard and there's Extended right here. And if we come over to Thinking, we could see the same exact thing here. We have Light, Standard, Extended, and Heavy. Now, in terms in terms of what each of these actually do, I want to walk you through this. The first one I want to walk you through is going to be GPT 5.2 thinking because this raises the bar for professional work and this is really the biggest upgrade to ChatGPT 5.2 right now. So this has state of the art, long context reasoning. So it can take in way more information like PDFs, CSVs, and you won't run into the issue that you had with ChatGPT 5 or ChatGPT 5.1 where it started to hallucinate. It has major improvements in spreadsheet creation, analysis, and formatting, and there are early gains in its ability to create presentations and slideshows. Now to show this off for you, I wanted to come over here. I wanted to turn on ChatGPT 5.2 thinking. We're gonna go with just standard and we're gonna ask it to do this. Create a workforce planning model that shows headcount, hiring plans, attrition, and budget impact, and include engineering, marketing, legal, and sales departments. Now, what this is going to do is this is going to run off and this is going to create this. And as we could see, we can see this actually go through and think, and we could see all the activity that's going to be happening over here. And if we click on this, it will actually show it down here. So it understands that it needs to create a spreadsheet template with formulas, and this is going to go through and this is going to do this. And we can actually walk through all of the reasoning that this this is doing, which is incredibly powerful because if you wanted to interrupt this at any time, you could actually do that now with ChatGPT, literally just by coming over here, typing, and then entering, which is incredibly powerful because in the past, you weren't able to do this, but now they rolled out this brand new update where if you see it thinking the wrong way, you want it to go down a different direction or you want it to do something differently, you can have it do that while it's actually thinking without interrupting it. In addition to that, if you click on the top right right here, you can actually see a progress bar right here, which I've never seen before, and I'm pretty sure that this literally just got released. We could see right here that this is 30% through, 31% through now, which is nice because otherwise you kind of have no idea where it actually is here, unless you know what type of progress it actually has. And now it reveals it here, which is great. I do wish though that they revealed it down here so that it was a little more obvious when this would be done. Okay, so now this is actually done here and we could see exactly what this looks like. So we could see what's inside, all the inputs, we could see everything that's in there, the summary, the charts, we could see how to use it. And this right here is pretty awesome. So we could come over here and we could see that this built out this pretty advanced spreadsheet right here with all of these different graphs, all of these different tables, everything in here very easily. And guess what? If we wanted to, we could come over here and we could adjust things we could download this, and this right here is pretty awesome because in the past, ChatGPT struggled with this. You would typically go to a model like Claude in order to do stuff like this, but now ChatGPT can handle it. Now, the next model that we need to focus on is going to be GPT 5.2 Instant, and as you guys know, this is built for everyday work and for learning. So, it's as warm and conversational as GPT 5.1. It gives you clear explanations that surface key information up front instead of you having to dig for it or you having to ask multiple questions in order to get something. It does improve with how-tos and walkthroughs, which is really good. It's a lot stronger with technical writing and with translations, and it has way better support for studying and career guidance. So basically, this is just a lot better at helping you with things. So if we come over here and open up ChatGPT, we could go ahead and come over here and turn on Instant and ask it something like, based on everything that you know about me, how should I advance 
my career. And then what this is going to do is this is going to go through all the chats that I've had with it, all the memory that it has, and it gives me some pretty good advice here. So your actual advantage isn't what most people think. You're not just a YouTuber. You're not just an AI tools guy. You're not just a consultant. You have an unfair advantage with distribution, translational skill, speed, and taste. So then this goes through and it gives me the core problem that's holding me back, which is that I am too monetized at the edge and not enough at the center. So it says that I have a lot of sponsorships, a lot of one-off mentorships, a lot of low ticket programs, a lot of experiment. They're all good, but none of them are actually defensible. So this goes through and gives me a three layer career stack that I should build. And this is quite incredible. I mean, look at how good this is. It's direct. It's not droning on. It is is just point, 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 and this is going through and actually giving me some really good advice right here, which I really like. In addition to that, if we come over here, you're going to see GPT 5.2 Pro. This is the smartest, most trustworthy model for difficult questions. This is really good if you're doing programming and if you're doing something like science, you're going to want to use this model. And then finally, I have some other notes about the API and different settings. So a few things that I want you to note. One, this is the API pricing right here. Take a screenshot of this if you want to look at it or if you want to compare it to the other pricing models, you could just go to openai.com slash API and you'll see it all right there. All three models have an August 2025 knowledge cutoff and GPT-51 is going to remain available to chat GPT paid users for three months before it sunsets and the API models have no current depreciation plans right now. Now, before I get into those settings that you need to make sure that you're turning on with ChatGPT and the new features that you need to make sure that you're using, I wanted to show you how you could hook ChatGPT up to more than 8,000 apps for free. Now, here's exactly how you could go through and do that. You're gonna to come to mcp.zapier.com or you could go to the pinned comment below. I send you directly to this link. You're gonna come over here. You're gonna click on new MCP server. You're then going to click on ChatGPT and you can name this. So I'm gonna name this Zapier ChatGPT MCT server and I'm gonna put Rob the AI guy just so that I know for my records what this actually is. Now. From here, we could go through and actually connect this to more than 8,000 different tools. So we could come over here, for example, all the time I use school. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to select all of these different tools right here. We're going to go through and we are going to connect this by just clicking on connect. And then this will let me connect it. In addition to that, we could come over here and connect it to a bunch of other tools that ChatGPT currently doesn't have access to. For example, I use Facebook ads all the time. We could come over here and we can see that we can now add all of this, or we could add in tools like Metricool if we wanted to be able to schedule things out. And you could actually go through for each of these and see all of the different actions that these can now take when it's hooked up to ChatGPT. Now, what you're gonna do from here is you're gonna come over here into connect, and this is gonna walk you through exactly how to do this. Essentially, you just come over to ChatGPT, you click on the bottom left-hand side right here, you click on settings, apps and connectors. We're gonna come all the way down to advanced settings. We're then going to turn on developer mode. And then from here, we're gonna click on create app. We're going to come over here and we're going to name this Zapier. We're going to put Zapier in here. We come back over here. I'm not going to show my MCP code, but this will give you the MCP code. And then you just come back over here and you put this in here. Okay. So now we could actually see that this is set up here. And then we could scroll down here and we could see what it actually has access to. So we could see right here that I have given this access to my Zoom. So now I could come over here and I could click on this plus right here. I could come over here, click on Zapier, and I could say, use using Zoom, please set up a meeting for 10 a.m. on Sunday, December 14th. Name it, a group call, 10 a.m., December 14th. Now, what this allows me to do is access more than 8,000 different apps and take action in more than 8,000 different apps from ChatGPT. And we could see it actually coming over here and calling this tool. And now we could click on create meeting and this goes off and this actually does this, which is great because now ChatGPT connects to way more apps and is way more powerful. Now we could see just like that, this went through, this actually created this. And if this was hooked up to my Gmail or my Outlook, I can now send off an email 
to whoever I need to like my entire list. In fact, I could actually come back over to Zapier here, come over here, come over to Kit, which is the email platform that I use that has all my subscribers on here. And guess what? I can actually get this to select all these tools. I can hook this up to Kit. I can hook it up to my email and I can have schedule out an email blast to go out to thousands of people from ChatGPT with the link to this weekend's call. And the best part about Zapier MCP is that you could go to the pin comment below and get started with it today for free. It walks you through just like I did exactly how to set this up and thousands of different tools that you can now connect to ChatGPT. If you want to get the most out of ChatGPT, you need to have it connected to all these different tools and you need to have this next setting that I'm going to show you turned on. There are several other features that I did want to show you here. So now if we come over here to the top right hand corner, you're going to see group chats. So you can now add people to a ChatGPT chat so that you guys can talk to it together. So if we click on start group chat right here, you will see exactly how this works. You get the link for the group chat, which you can then send to somebody or there are other ways to invite them. So I'm going to come over here. We could put this down here. We could invite with link or the other thing that you could do is you could invite somebody based on this their email. Now, the other thing that you could do is click over here and you could see that you can manage the people that are in here. You could add them directly by their email. That's how you do that. You could come over here and you could rename the group if you wanted to, or you could customize ChatGPT. So if you want this to be specific to something, let's say that we were doing a marketing project or you're doing an operations project or you're doing an HR project or coding, whatever the case is, you could give it all the instructions here, and it gives you 1,500 characters, which is quite a bit. In addition to that, you can also get ChatGPT to respond automatically or not. So if I click on save right here, we could see, hey, and we could see that it doesn't actually respond. So what this will actually do is allow multiple people to chat, multiple people to give their context, multiple people to be able to do things, and then you can tell ChatGPT at ChatGPT, and then it will actually reference all the chats that are in there, which is pretty powerful. In addition to that, if we come over here and we click on settings, there are now a bunch of new settings that you want to make sure are turned on. For example, separate voice mode right here. This is brand new. So this will ask you to keep ChatGPT voice in a separate full screen without real-time transcripts and visuals. So if we click on this right here, what this does is actually changes ChatGPT. So now if we click on this, this actually pops ChatGPT out into its own voice mode right here, as opposed to it being in the same window, which personally I find really helpful and really powerful. So if you like that, you should have that setting turned on. For the sake of this, we're gonna come over here back to turned off. Now the next thing that I did wanna show you is if you come over now into personalization, you scroll all the way down. Actually, before I show you that, I wanted to show you right here, base style and tone. They added in a bunch of more different styles and a bunch of different tones that I would strongly suggest to check out. But if you come down here into advanced, you're now gonna see several different things. You wanna make sure the canvas is going to be turned on. You want to make sure that advanced voice is going to be turned on. Otherwise, you're just going to have regular voice mode. And you also want to make sure that connector search right here is turned on because this lets ChatGPT automatically search through connected sources for answers. So like I was showing you before, how we have connected to Zapier, you don't have to actually tell it, hey, go into this, hey, go into that, when you have that turned on because it will just automatically do that at its own desire. In addition to that, if we come over here, we could see the ChatGPT now gives you access to more apps. But as we can see right here, we have three, there's about 10 rows here. So there's about 30 apps that you're able to connect this to. And if you come down here to connectors, we could see that there are about 30 of these here too. But like I was sharing with you earlier, if you really want to supercharge this and take this beyond just the basic things that ChatGPT lets you connect to in terms of connectors and in terms of apps, you want to make sure that you hook up Zapier to this. And again, you could get started with that today for free. Now, the next thing that I want to call out here, if we come under security, ChatGPT just rolled out text message to get SMS or WhatsApp. Basically, this is two-factor authentication. I would strongly suggest you have this turned on and you have the Authenticator app turned on because you want to be able to make sure that people aren't able to get into your ChatGPT that aren't you, especially if you're telling ChatGPT a lot of stuff that 
you wouldn't want everybody to know. And then the next thing I wanted to show you is actually gonna be something that's super useful for the holidays. So we're gonna come over here very quickly. We're gonna come into apps and connectors. I'm gonna turn off developer mode for right now so that I could show you this. We have ChatGPT 5.2 Instant open here. If we click on plus, we could see this shopping research agent. This will actually help you find things. For example, I am looking to buy my fiance a Rolex Datejust. 2022-2024, I want the size to be 28 millimeter or 26 millimeter. Please find me good watches that are in brand new condition. Now, what this is going to do, and this is pretty cool here, it can help you find anything. It doesn't have to be a Rolex, doesn't have to be a car. It could be something small like toilet paper, this actually starts this. So if we come over here, preferred dial color, I'm gonna put mother of pearl, we're gonna click on continue, bracelet style, we're gonna click on oyster, bezel, I'm gonna do fluted, budget, I am going to do up to $12,000, and then this is going to go through, and this is actually going to gather a bunch of options for us to review. Now, the reason that I chose Rolex here is because I wanted to see how specific the questions that it gave us would be to a Rolex, and if you asked it about a car, or if you asked it about toilet paper, or if you asked it about water, or a microphone, or a camera, or something like that, it would give you a bunch of different options. And then we can see what this does is now goes through, and this this is going to do research on our behalf and find things for sale. So we actually have to go through. I do not like that. What don't I like about it? I don't like the style of it. This, I do like this. And then this goes through and it says, great, your final picks are gonna be ready soon. And this is basically like your own stylist or shopper, but the AI version, which is incredibly powerful. And you could help this find you things that are in a certain price range. You could have this find you things that are discounted, the opportunities here are really endless. This is like your own AI agent that goes and scours the internet for the things that you want. Okay, so now we can see that this actually went through and this gives me a bunch of different things. It says why this is the best buy right here, meets constraints, gives us a bunch of things, gives us different trade-offs to note here. And then we have a bunch of different comparison tables right here. Now, this is incredibly powerful because otherwise I would have had to go through and kind of source these things and figure them out myself. But we could see here that we have this right here. We have this option. If we come down here, we have another option. We have another option. What I really like is that it gives me all the different reasons that each of these options is so special. So I know which one to actually go with. And this right here is pretty awesome. And it goes through exactly different notes on sourcing and availability, how to choose among these. And this is incredibly helpful and basically give me an entire research report with actual things that I could click on and go to the link on the website in order to purchase if I wanted. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I would strongly suggest that you check out this video right here that walks you through whether or not you should be using ChatGPT Agent Builder or Gemini Agent Builder in order to build out your automations with either Gemini or ChatGPT. If that sounds interesting, I'll see you over there.